what we'll do is we'll walk you through and show you how being able to create these dynamic reports directly within Excel is going to help you. First and foremost, um, what you should see on the screen is we have this lead management status report, right? So let's suppose I'm a, I'm a marketing manager. I'm looking at um, uh, this report and my job is to make sure that all of the leads that I pass over to the salespeople are being utilized and that they're, um, that they work, right? That they're, that they're good leads. And so this report that I have has been built using data from two separate systems. I have some information here under lead activity from my CRM system that shows me uh, what, you know, how many leads I brought in, uh, how they've been, uh, you know, resulted, are they working, you know, how many of them have been disqualified, how many of them have, are good leads, you know, that sort of thing, and, and what's my conversion rate. And then here on the bottom, I have data pulled from the ERP, uh, from Epicor um, sales, showing me the sales process and where those leads are um, in that process. And so, so what I've done is, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at this report and, and I see that, of course, we have 488 leads and overall we've got about a 30% conversion rate, which looks good. But then as I'm coming down here, I see that I've got 11 sitting here in contact the prospect. Now, I know that that means that it's sitting in the first stage of sales and has not, the customer's not been contacted. So what I can do at this point is I have a couple of options here. I could, uh, I could drill down into those leads um, and see what the campaign they, they belong to. So I could uh, drill down and I could bring up a table that's gonna pull um, the detail directly from the, my ERP database, from my Epicor database. I could also go up here and change the campaign to an, to an individual campaign instead of all, and I can start to see what each of these campaigns look like. And so I notice here that seven of them belong to this customer relationship campaign. I can see that as I go along that, you know, my trade show campaign, um, there's one in there. Um, but to save some time, I want to view these side by side so I could do something like this. I'm going to highlight this, I'm going to drag it over, and I'm going to take advantage of the copy and paste and drag and drop functionality of Excel. And notice now I have all those campaigns side by side and I can look at them and, and you know, compare them uh, very quickly and easily. So once again, I'm looking through, I see that a majority of them are here in the customer relationship campaign. and obviously. That's extremely alarming because this is a this has a 95% conversion rate, right? I know that our customer relationship campaign comes from existing customers that you know we're either offering discounts to or whatever, and you know things like that. So I'm going to go to the sales manager and I'm going to say, hey, um, I've got some leads sitting here in a my customer relationship campaign that you might want to take a look at because um, you know the, in the past these are. These are virtual sales, and it's showing that they're still at the starting gate. So as a sales manager, I also have this report. I bring it up, I look at it, and, uh, and I, I'm naturally alarmed as well. Now what I want to do is I want to find out what salesperson these belong to. So I'm going to, instead of a list, I'm going to drill down to pivot table, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the um, salesperson uh, field, and I'm gonna drop that into my report. So I'm gonna scale, I'm gonna scroll down over here just like anybody would do with a normal uh, uh, pivot table. I'm gonna drop that into the column section and when I do, I see that all seven of those leads belong to Scott Papil, right? So naturally, I think, uh, wow, if, if all of these are his, I wanna go find out what other quotes he may be having problems with. So I can go to another report that I have, which is my sales forecast report, which again is pulling data out of my um, sales uh, module. And you notice that when I open it up, my current date is in there. And so this thing is updating for me every day. So I'm gonna go over here to Scott, to his quotes, and I'm gonna right click on that number. And I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna drill down into a pivot table on that one as well. Because again, I want to, uh, I want to be able to put this information together in a way that, uh, that gives me the answer that I'm looking for right away. And, and what I'm looking for right away is I want to see how many of his quotes uh, he's having problems with. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a field called uh, reason description that we included in there so that they could uh, tell, you know, so they could 
uh, document how these uh, quotes are being resulted. So I'm going to drop that in here, and it's going to break these out for me, uh, again, by, by reason. And as I go down here, um, some of these I see um, looks like some that we could win, but immediately I, my, I'm, uh, my, I, my eye catches on this couldn't meet delivery date, right? So I want to find out more about that because obviously I want to find out why we, uh, you know, what products we had that weren't meeting the customer's requirements. So I'm going to double click on that because now I can still get uh, down to the list from that pivot table. And I'm going to scroll over because the first thing I want to do is I want to find out which quotes these are. So I'm going to scroll over here to uh, column quote here, and I'm going to grab those quotes. And what I want to do now is I want to find out what parts are on those quotes that, uh, that we're uh, having troubles with, right? So I'm going to go, I'm, I don't have a report that shows me uh, parts by quote. So I'm going to have to make my own uh, way here. So I'm going to do a little off-roading. I'm going to drop these quotes here directly onto this uh, worksheet here, onto this spreadsheet. And, uh, and I'm going to go and create my own function that goes out and shows me all of the parts that are on each quote. And so the way that I would do that is, is I'm going to I'm going to bring up a, my function editor in Excel Connect, and uh, I'm going to tell it I want to build a function. And I'm going to, from my Epicor data, I'm going to pull my, uh, my quote detail uh, by ship date. And uh, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to say pull. It, notice it says, what information would you like return? I want to return the part uh, names. And, um, and I'm, obviously, uh, those are going to be text. Um, this is one of the things that, that delineates the, our functionality, our Excel Connect functionality from uh, even pivot tables, because with a pivot table, I wouldn't be able to return uh, text values as a result. If you've ever tried to drop a text field into the values section of a pivot, of a pivot table, what you're going to get back is a count of the records, but it, won't, it doesn't have the capability of showing text. But I can actually designate here that I want to show a distinct list of text which is my part numbers for each of these quotes. I'm going to go fill in these uh, fields here, and uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to go back. I want to make sure that I get a, a good amount of, uh, of data, so uh, I'm going to go back here and say, you know, um, I might go back as far as uh, 2010 here. Ooh. Let me go back here to my... So I'm going to go like this, and so you can see I can easily uh, select the date here. And then, of course, today's, I'm going to select today's date as my end date, because I want to see everything up until now. And then I'm going to add one more filter in here, and that filter is um, by quote number. So you notice that I was able to choose any of the fields in my data set as my return value. Well, likewise, I can add as many filters as I want, and I can choose any of those fields as my filtering value. So of course, in this case, I'm going to choose quote, and I'm going to say uh, equal, and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to use a cell reference for this one because um, I want to I want to uh, I want the quote number to change as I go down. So I'm going to select this column here, and I'm going to anchor it to that column, and I'm going to say okay. When I have it all filled out the way that I want, notice that I can I can put it anywhere I want, but of course I'm going to I'm going to drop it here. I'm going to say OK. And when I do, it's going to bring me back a list of the part numbers from that quote. And uh, because of the way that I anchored it, when I double click it, notice that it copies it down uh, and uses the appropriate quote number from, the, from that uh, uh, left side column. And uh, it fills in automatically for me. So now I see that I've got quite a few parts on these different quotes. So to pare it down again, I'm going to start with the one that's costing me the most money. So I'm going to go and build another function. And I'm going to say function here. And this time, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to choose to sum up the expected amounts from each of those. And I'm going to say, I'm going to go and grab uh, expected here, uh, right here. And, uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one from quote um, 
and this time instead of uh, filtering by quote, I'm going to filter, turn around and filter again by part. Because what I want to do is I want to find out how much I have expected um, per part. So I'm going to say part uh, in, and I'm going to use the in because I have some of these I have more than one. I'm going to click that, and now I'm going to click on that column again, and once again I'm going to anchor that. Say OK. I have it all filled out the way that I want. I'm going to drop it into this uh, field here. Say OK. And now notice that it brings me back the dollar value of of all these parts that I have currently expected in all of, you know, throughout my quote system. Now, once again, I'm going to double click that and it's going to copy down. And when I do, notice that immediately what I see is that I have, uh, you know, I, I see exactly where I need to start. I have $303,000 roughly that is um, sitting out there in quotes that I didn't get because uh, we couldn't meet uh, customer delivery date, right? So once again, if I want to pare it down even more, I can right click on that and go to, uh, go to pivot table. And uh, now what it's going to do is it's going to parse those out for me by, by each part number. And I can see that this DCD200-ML uh, is currently costing me you know, 60000 plus dollars in quotes, right? Well, now I'm going to go to my engineering project manager and I'm going to say, listen, I've got a problem here. Uh, I need you to find out what's going on because in the interim, I've talked with Scott Papil and found out that, yeah, the customer wanted the part back with a four-week turnaround and we weren't able to meet that. So I want to find out why. And I'm going to go to my, my engineering project manager and I'm going to say, listen, this part, this DCD-200ML, we have a problem meeting a customer's four-week turnaround requirement. I need to find out what's going on. So as the engineering project manager, I get that information. Naturally, I'm, uh, I'm alarmed when I hear the dollar amount. And so what I do is I bring up this lead time report that I have that tells me you know, what processes are required for each uh, part that we provide and uh, you know, materials and things like that, as well as what are my subcontracted and, and in-house processes. I'm gonna go over here and select uh, my part number, and when I do, the first thing that, um, that pops up, of course, is a, a list that tells me which of these processes we subcontract, and I can see what is our longest subcontracted process. Well, immediately, I look at this, and see that we have a, a heat treating process that we have to send outside that's taking 165 hours. Well, that right there tells me my problem, right? It takes more than four weeks just to get the uh, parts back from um, our outside vendor. So there's no way that we can put the part together in, a, uh, in an amount of time that would uh, meet that customer's uh, demand, right? So naturally, I, can, I feed that information back to the sales manager. And now, as the sales manager, I have all of the information that I need to go to a controller, to go to whomever and say, listen, here's the problem, um, here's the magnitude of the problem, and now let's look at how we would fix it. If you think about the way business works or you know day-to-day -day, uh, activities go, normally what would happen is, is that uh, Scott Papil would lose a, a quote to a customer because we couldn't meet the delivery date. Uh, probably in the sales meeting, it would let his sales manager know. Sales manager is going to say, well, I need to be aware of these. Well, at that point, it, may, it might be a $2,500 quote, right? So the sales manager is going to say, well, if this happens too many times, I need to know about it. You know, they, they might take notes on a piece of paper or in an email or what have you. And so a blip here and a blip there, and they may happen far enough apart that it doesn't raise a, a red flag. And Scott might see the engineering manager in the break room and say, hey, I lost a quote because we weren't able to meet the customer deadline. And, you know, the engineering project manager is going to say, well, that's too bad. But now we're aggregating all of this data and bringing it all together, and we're able to look at it in the aggregate, not just individual transactions. And now what we're able to do is we're able to get all of the information together and, and really get a picture of what's going on. And so now as the sales manager, I go back to the controller and I say, listen, um, we've got a problem here. I'm, we're losing uh, business, a lot of business, because we are having to you know, do our heat treating out of house. So as the controller, 
if you tell me, well, we're losing $300,000 worth of business, it's a $300,000 revenue stream, well, I'm gonna think, does that look good on, a, on our bottom line? Well, absolutely, right? And, um, but now we have options. Do we bring it in-house? Do we retool so that we can do it in-house? With $300,000 in, in revenue, that's something that you, know, you kind of have to look at. And so what Excel Connect does is it lets you, um, it lets you make those, uh, you know, those determinations because you're able to get all of that data right away at your fingertips, and uh, now you're not dealing with, with one-offs here and there. You're able to see you know, the company as a, as a whole.